Yep. Right. Right. Yeah, Sorry. because yeah, that's, that's he a, has a two, uh -huh. but he needed yeah. a four. So he's putting in a six because he can't get a four. So it would be like charging him double for the two. Yeah. Right. Well, currently he has a one inch line going into that building. Oh, oh no, only a one. Oh. So if Brendan's here, so I make the suggestion if he runs a six into the near the building and it goes to four, and you guys just want to charge him a four, that's up to you. But I would make him have the two inch separate, not on the six inch, because if you ever have a problem with the fire line. You shut off domestic. You have a problem with domestic. You shut off the fire. And I talked to John Dockery about it. He likes them separate. All our town buildings are separate. It's only fair that we keep it separate, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was just yeah. looking at it from the fact that he said he spent a year trying to get a four. Are four inch lines yeah, that difficult? Yep. Yeah. yeah, four inch is very hard to get. Yeah, it's, it's not out there. So, so Brendan, you know, what's his all other alternative? Run a six. Run a charge, six and a two. Charge him a four. What do you guys? Brendan yeah. said, you know, run a six, charge him for four. They're running, they run a separate two inch. Uh, I'm sorry. From the street. Yeah. Run a six separate for the fire. Two. Yeah, run a six for the fire and a two inch domestic. Yep, and they're separate. So and they'd be separate. Before. Johnny with us? Can you hear us? Yes, I finally was able to log in. I had all kinds of technical problems there. Okay, no problem. I, thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, so we, we just started the the discussion on uh, your development, your project, and also the email that you sent um, a week or so ago right. to the group. Um, so just to recap. Um, your original intent was to upgrade the one inch domestic to a two inch domestic and right. add and add a four inch fire off the main. Correct. Uh, you're unable to secure four inch pipe at the length you need. So your proposal was to put in one six inch uh, into the building and tee off to a two inch and a four inch. Right. So the question, one of the questions is, how are you able to get the four inch for inside? Is that different uh, material or different length? That material can... length, very short length. Okay. Okay. Um, another question that has come up uh, is how many residential units existed prior to the fire? It was two residential units in the commercial. Okay. Um, so that answers that question. We, we, we weren't sure if there was one or two. Um, okay, so that sort of answers the questions, and, and I'd like to just open it up to you if there's anything you'd like to say for opening remarks, and um, we can address our questions either way. Yeah, the only thing is I, I you know, did uh, do a uh, an affordable unit there, so I was asking for some consideration on, on, on that as well. And what happens is uh, we went through this with planning, boarding, zoning, after I got all the permitting i was able to say i can give one to affordable housing for a 25 year affordable housing rental and uh, the town gets credit for all three of the residential units towards the affordable housing numbers that the town of cohasset needs because it's now considered because it's at least 20 percent it's third percent so they get the town of cohasset gets accredited by the state for three affordable units even though because you're 20 percent or more that's that's how that works, and you can okay. check with the affordable housing committee, and so forth and so on, if need need be. Robert Jeffer was the chairman at the time, and now it's another uh, you know gentleman that I've interacted with. He was also in the email. Okay. Okay, but uh, one thing I'd like to say to you, Mr. Schiavo, you know we are an enterprise fund. We are a separate business from the town, mm -hmm. and we do not service the entire town. Mm -hmm. So okay. a, a consideration would be hurting our customers. Okay. Perhaps there's some funding. Because we get nothing from it. Okay, yeah. Perhaps there's some funding through affordable housing there. That's why they're involved. Uh, they said there is some funding there and I, th I think they're gonna reach out to you and I'll see that that happens. And then I also reached out to uh, the state representatives to see if there's any 
uh, funding there available from the states as as well. That's that's why Joan is in, in involved in the email. But okay. we have never gotten any consideration from any affordable units okay. that were done in Cohasset. All right. Well, but per, perhaps there is an avenue there. I'm, I was just asking and mentioning it. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, what we were just discussing when you joined was, um, it is the uh, the preference of both the water department and the fire chief that two separate lines serve a singular building. So in this case, um, your proposal to put one line into the building and split off is, is, is not preferred uh, okay. by the water department or the fire chief uh, in the event something does happen to um, either line, um, you know, fire, domestic, one, they, they would have both have to be shut down. So what we would prefer to see is um, a two inch domestic off the main and the six inch fire off the main uh, mm -hmm. and, and six inch because you, you know you're not able to secure the, the four inch okay that that okay. that makes makes sense if you can put that into either a letter or an email whatever and i'll follow those guidelines i don't have a problem with doing that okay whatever uh, the increased cost is that a upfront fee or is that over the course of a period of time so there's so according to our rules and regulations, there's a system development a system development fee, which mm -hmm. goes by the size of the line, and mm -hmm. also there's an additional unit fee for uh, new residential units. So okay. um, uh, what we were discussing as you were joining was um, a system development fee for a four inch line, which is um, what really the, the difference of what you would be adding. Um, and what we are, what we need to discuss as a board is, um, what additional unit fee may be, uh, charged for this development, given that there was two existing units. Right. There was a total of three with the one, you know, commercial. So there was three and now there's a total of six. Okay. So, um, or Lee and Steve, is there any discussion on, um, the per unit fee given the historical number of two? and now the additional third. So uh, obviously that's a difference of one. No, it's a difference of two. He has four living units. He had two living units, now he has four. Uh, it's a total of three living units and three commercial units in the building. Yeah. This now, there's three and three. Oh, it's three and three? Yeah, oh. It's commercial, three. And um, living more. Right, living. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so it's only one additional unit. It's one additional residential unit, correct? Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Maybe uh, what uh, Ms. Machino was discussing about funding available could be uh, pertaining to you applying for it for the development cost of this additional unit. And also, I, um, uh, you know, reaching out to affordable housing again, and then looking into that affordable housing committee. Mm -hmm. because I can't see any way that we could uh, get any money out of this. And I think it might be, you know, geared more toward the developer. Okay. And then, like I said, if, if this is an upfront fee or if it's over the course of five years or 10 years or, you know, whatever the case may, may, may be, if there's a payment available, a payment plan available that gets on water bill is it up? All that's up front, right? All of it's up front. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, just uh, for discussion's sake, for Lee and Steve, um, and, and maybe this is redundant, but uh, it, just to respond to John's request to give consideration for the affordable housing, um, is there any discussion on consideration for the additional unit fee? Uh, for the for the one additional unit that is is being built, uh, not really because I think he might be able to get some funding from the state if they're talking about funding. Okay, Steve, any yeah, any I, discussion? I believe there is funding from the state that he can probably get reimbursed via the state. 
Okay. You, know, so, you know, I am actually willing to look into that. Like I had said, I'm, I'm not sure if there is, there, there's, uh, you know, I hope, and, uh, I hope to open discussion to that fact. That's why I, I had added her to the email. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to her again and I'm waiting for a response on that. And I would like to, you know, make 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 this connection sooner, sooner than the later, because I'm, I'm, you know, getting closer and closer on the building project. They're insulating the building as uh, we speak. So I'm looking for occupancy permits, say, uh, sometime in September, if all goes well. Okay. So. I believe what the board is considering at this point is the system development fee for a four inch new line, which comes at the fee of 54,400 and an additional unit fee of 2,720 for your okay. one additional residential unit. Okay. Yeah. If you can either put that into an email, if not, I can check in with Brenda. So I have something, you know, in you know, writing and I'll, and I'll uh, do you know what I can on my end over the next week or two. Okay. Okay, and we're not charging for the upgrade for the one to two, right? That's what is being discussed and up for consideration by the board. Okay. Is there any discussion on that? No discussion. We'll go with that. Okay. Brenda, do we need a motion on that or no? Um, no, I, I think this will be fine. Okay. So, John, we will put that in writing and we will get that over to you. Um, you. Is, is there anything else you'd like to discuss? No, that is it. If you can do that via email, is if, you know, the fastest. And if not, I can always uh, drop in and see, you know, Brenda, and I can pick up the letter. Okay. We will get that uh, to you as soon as possible. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your luck. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good afternoon. Bye now. <laughs> Okay, moving on to uh, what are the current update and master plan update? Uh, I think everyone might have seen Jonathan's email. He and uh, Fred are not available, but he did give us a little snapshot of what's going on. Um, the sanitary study is the big one today. Um, Whitney Crossing has been shut down at the request of Hingham. So I think that's something we want to keep an eye on as well. Um, yes, I was curious about that. Where did they get the uh, bacteria hits? Because that was the problem before why we shut it down and we did all that work. Yeah, I don't know. Any, anything on that, Brendan or yeah. Brenda? No. no. I didn't even know about it, honestly, till this morning. Okay. I got a phone call when I was on vacation last. Did this, I, I, did this happen last week when they shut it down? No idea. Uh, just as we've been asked until further notice. Um, got a phone call you said? I did from um, Darren over and I was I was I was in the White Mountains. I just didn't call him back, but I got a missed call from him. So I wonder. It must have been last week when I was away. Okay. Yeah, well, they, borrowed the, that. well, they borrowed the chemical feed pump from us to feed chlorine into a hydrant and hull. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're getting hits all over the place if they're borrowing something for hull. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, if you could just keep us posted. Yep. Well, I'll do is I'll, I'll, once I find out, I'll, uh, I'll shoot everybody uh, just a notice. Okay. Um, so can we just take a few minutes to talk about Smith Place? Um, because admittedly, I, I'm not in the loop on this. And I, I just saw the email from whomever sent it recently, uh, Brenda. Um, so we're really racking up some bills here. Was this expected, planned? What, 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 what's going on? Well, I got Brenda in here. So what happened was um, at, towards the end of the fiscal year, um, we 
heard that they were going to be paving Smith Place. And the infrastructure down there is extremely old. So I don't, I don't know, what was the original plan to do? We're just going to replace a couple old lines because they, when they put the new main in, they didn't go to the property line. They only went 10 feet connected to old 1935. So once we started digging, we're finding all the saddles are rotted out. They're only 30 years old. Give it take. I think they did it in 93 and 94. So I've saved them. There's, there's nothing left on bolts. They're as thin as pencils, you know? So um, Brian wants to pave the road. And if we pave it, those things are going to pop. It's like, it's like what you guys run on Bond Street? Exactly like it. <laughs> and then worse because it's older. It's 10 years old than Pond Street. And so some of them, one fell right off. I witnessed it. Jesus. So we're halfway done. We're in a pause to finish the other eight, just the saddles. But it's, um, it was up to you guys uh, moving forward. So I mentioned it to Brian. He said, put it on the agenda and this is where we stand. So originally, we got an invoice in for the first portion of the work, which was 15054 so that came out of last year's budget. To date, what they've already done is 32 grand. But to finish up, it's another 49 grand. So a total of almost 80,000? It's going to be 81,000 out of this year's budget. Wow. Brian said they're not doing Pond Street now unless that changes. They're not going to pave it because that was one of the streets they wanted to do before September, I guess. They're going to do Elm Street and Margin and Atlantic to Whitehead. So just kind of a thought um, for the board. You know, if they pave it, one of those, let's, let's go. How much does it cost to repair an emergency basis? You know, is it better to tackle it now while the road's not paved? And Right. that's what happened on Soyuz. Yeah, I would agree with you that it would be best to do it now. Then we don't have to worry about, you know, repaving it afterwards because if we wait, it'll cost more than that. Brennan, is that the is it the same manufacturer as Pond Street? Would you even uh, would you, you even know, know that? We don't know, but looking at some of the saddles, there's the one inch ones are rotted out. Uh, the the three quarter summer they actually have like an epoxy and they're not rotted out. There's no rhyme or reason, so it was just do it all, you know. I've saved all of them; they're pretty bad. So if eight are bad of the sixteen, probably all sixteen or fifteen are, you know. All right. So is it coming out of extraordinary maintenance or system maintenance? Brenda? I was putting it under system maintenance because we got more money in there. Uh, for now, um, I mean, we won't do anything now. And <laughs> I mean, if in a perfect world, it would be nice if we could possibly use some of the money that was borrowed for street work for our water main replacements. But I don't think Jennifer's going to allow that. Okay. Um, I ask you a question, why, why can she not allow us to use what's in our fund? Well, I, I, it's a, I, I'm not sure what is going on at this point, to be honest. Um, I do have confirmation that the monies um, were borrowed um, to the tune of oh. 2.630. Now, when were they borrowed? This is the work that we have not. Uh, started or even gotten any contracts on? Correct. Yes. Yeah, right. So this was date. This letter from Lock Lord was dated June thirteenth, um, and sent to Linda, um, who I guess was helping Jennifer to um, be able to get money for us. Um, so this was just a confirmation letter. Um, so, because I want to. Now, you're saying that town meeting, uh, 
two or three town meetings ago said that we could borrow this money when we were doing these projects. We have not started the projects yet, but we are going to be borrowing this money a year in advance of when we're doing the projects and start paying on it. I can't no. answer the question. So. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think we start paying on it. Um, isn't that have something to do with when it's actually bonded versus borrowed? We're not we're not spending anything, so I don't think we're we're paying on it. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, but to Steve's question or someone's question, what I have been told is that Jennifer is saying we can't use that funding for anything other than what was specifically written in the warrant, and the warrant has um, several streets listed. Yes. And, uh, Beachwood was not one of them, for example. So she is saying, if my understanding is accurate, that we cannot use that funding for any of the Beachwood overages because it wasn't listed in the warrant. So everyone else I've talked to says it's not accurate, but we haven't quite gotten that answer nailed down. Um, so if it is accurate to the letter of the law, if we can't, then we won't. But we can also go back to town meeting and just amend that warrant or amend the use, can we? Probably, yes, I'm sure we can, because I think the use for that 6.3 was for uh, Main Street and uh, for Atlantic. Can, you just, can we just have town council to say a quick look at it with our request? Yeah, I mean, someone's got to have the answer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just ask that question to town okay. council. Okay. Um, so where are we at with that communication, Brenda? Is there any request out there or is, are we waiting for anyone to get back to us or is that just a dead, dead conversation at this point? I Right now it's a dead conversation. I was hoping that, because I talked to Brian about it and I was hoping he was going to have a sit down with her and Michelle. You got to give this out <clears throat> what the deal is. Um, because in talking with Brian, we thought he thought, well, we'll be able to use that money to, to finish up paying for Beachwood Street. But when I talked to her, she said no. But she also told me that the funding wasn't in place yet. Yeah, so I'll follow up on that. Uh, I'll try to get some clarification. Um, <clears throat> but as it relates to the Smith Place work, um, do, are, are we in agreement that we need to proceed with this work? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> Lee, do you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, okay. if they're going to be repaving it and we have this problem, I don't see any other alternative. I agree. All right. So, because yeah, as you know, as we're looking at what's happening in the world today, if we get it done at these hopefully projected prices of 81,000, if we put it off, we might be looking at over 120. Right. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Even more if there's some catastrophic failure. So, yeah. um, so Brenda, all we, right, we'll, we'll coordinate with Iria Brothers to make sure that we uh, finish that job up. But if we have the bills from Iria, we need to pay them. And if we don't have access to the, the 2.6, we're going to be paying them out of system maintenance. That's correct. Okay. So, is there a, a way to have the budget fulfilled if we can? determine if we can use that other funding or is it once it's spent from the operating budget it's spent and other than town meeting there's no way to to fulfill the budget or refill the budget yeah i right now i think the only the way we can do it i don't have at the end the latest and greatest 32000 they bill on thursdays so um i'm assuming i'll have it this thursday I don't know if we pay it out of system development, if we do get the okie dokie, if she can move it over. Um, or okay. if we go to town meeting, you know, in November and just ask for more money for these things. I don't I don't know. The last time we had something similar, we just went to town meeting, we just wrote the war article say to transfer funds from A to B. Well, that's what we did for the main break um, downtown. Right, right. And, so we'd have uh, possibly have to do the same thing if we're allowed to use the money. So we have to get a clarification, Chris, from at least me at town council to say, hey, can we use this for this? Okay. 
Then we can start okay. the process. Yeah. All right. So that definitely needs some attention. I don't know. It just seems to be lingering without any answer. So I'll, I'll attempt to work with Brenda on that. Uh, okay, and get an answer. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for that explanation on Smith Place. Um, <clears throat> so I think Jonathan's other updates in his word and current report are, are relatively minor. So we don't need to touch on them, I don't think. Um, but segueing to master plan, so I had to move our monthly or bi-monthly meeting to Thursday, so I will be speaking with water tomorrow. Um, you know, the, these these calls generally are, are not that earth shattering. Um, they just tell us kind of what they're working on, the progress they're making. Uh, on our last call a few weeks ago, um, you know, the only positive update was that they will likely get us the draft report in August, so a few weeks ahead of <clears throat> when they planned in September. So hopefully this time next month, month we'll have a draft report. Um, so that's all I know of at this point in terms of that plan. Uh, I think the only other new development was uh, the proposal, which has been circulating via email. Um, and just to, to level set, uh, we had told Woodard and Kern that one of our main challenges is residuals management, sludge management, um, and we'd like them to take a harder look on that. So um, they did that, and essentially they came back saying that you need all these other things done before we can make a full assessment and recommendation on how to improve your residuals management. So that's what the $64,000 quote was that we saw the other day um, and in conversations and texts and things we've we've I think we loosely agreed that this has been done before. Right, so we, we're no one's interested in paying $64,000 to water and current for stuff that's already been done. Because the survey was already done. Well, that, that's what I don't have a firm answer on. So, you know, there's some people here with much more history than, than I, but what studies or surveys or assessments have been done on the Sludge Lagoon in the last 10 years or so that we could actually put our hands on? That would be a comparison to what Woodard what is proposing. I think it goes back longer than 10 years because as long as I've been here, we've been talking about the expansion to the third lagoon that was supposed to have been put in initially that never was. And every conversation I had with Carl, this is what they were working for at Woodard and Curran, and they were working towards getting the DEP approval. And that was what was hanging them up. So, you know, this is where it was left. And, you know, then all of a sudden that whole mess came in three years ago with the COVID and Jason and, uh, Everything went under the bus, shall we say. So, but is there anything tangible that we can refer back to or look at, or I mean, how do we pick up the ball from what Carl was working on? I don't know. You know, unless uh, we can have someone from Woodard and Kern contact him and see where he left it, because it was supposed to be in train and he was working with DEP on the expansion. Was he a Woodard employee? Yes. No. Yeah. What, Carl? No, he was not. Oh, really? I thought he was. He worked through a temp agency. You mean we had him here that many years through a temp agency? Yep. I always assumed he was a Woodard employee. No, he was not. Okay. Brenda, do you have any insight into any of that past work? No, and I tried to talk to... Um, Fred a little bit this morning, but with the DEP being here, I didn't yeah. get a chance because that proposal came up and I said, you know, I, I didn't read it, but it seemed like a lot. But, you know, I know there's certain things that people had said that they thought it had been done, but I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know where to look for this stuff. And, and as for getting in touch with Carl, um, I have been unable to reach him. <laughs> His cell phone was a Wooded and Curran cell phone. He returned that. And prior to him leaving, he shut his home phone off. So no email for him? No, I don't have a, I don't have a personal email for him. Okay. Did we have an address? I know he lives in Pembroke. That's all I know. Okay. Now, was Doran Krause a Wooded 
employee or was he also from a temp agency? No, I think I think Doran was wooded. Yeah. Doran was wooded. No, I'm really surprised because Carl was here how many years? Eight? Nine? Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. So would we have engaged any third parties or engineers as part of that work that perhaps we can connect with? Consultants, engineers, or anyone? I, I I don't know. I'd have to ask Jonathan to see if he knows anything in regards to what Carl might have been working on, because I, I don't know about any of it. I reached out to somebody from that used to you know work in the department and they have not got back to me at all. So just kind of want to let you know. Okay. All right. Well, let's um let's table that for now. Is uh, hey, uh, Chris, can I jump in quickly? Yeah, please. Um, I just got an update from um, Weir River. They shut down Whitney Crossing on Sunday. Um, and this is just quick conversation he just said our pumps could not handle the residual um from our system I, again i'm probably speaking out of terms but he said we weren't pumping enough chlorine through the through whitney cross and he said it was eating up his chlorine that's why they shut it down on sunday so um jonathan and might want to reach out to um uh darren okay yeah, because didn't we put in new chlorine pumps? Yeah, we put we put those new um the um the, we, the detection system right. That's why we shut down last Holy year. Right? System over there, yeah. Yeah. So you understand what I said, Brenda? Right? You should let Jonathan yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Inadequate to hold the residuals. What does that mean? I guess we. I guess we would sending inadequate water onto their system because there's not enough chlorine. Okay. All right. Thanks for that update. Um, so anything further on water and current or master plan update? Okay. So uh, financials, we don't have anything. We saw the email from Jennifer. She's going to have year-end financials sometime in August. Um, and I told her when the time is right, uh, hopefully in August, um, we'd like to also review indirect costs. So um, we'll be sure to reconcile that and uh, move on. Um, we don't have any financial reports to review. Um, expenditure budget, Brenda, anything to report on the close out of the year? Anything out of the ordinary, any issues? Uh, no, um, the number, I have, let me just pull it up here real quick. <clears throat> Hard to look at a little screen. Looks like uh, we still had about 130,000 um, in the expenditure budget. Um, we used up as much as we could in the short time we had, but I wish we had, as Brendan said, we are wishing we had more time so that we could have gotten more done on Smith Place, you know, because we could have used that money up instead of already popping into this fiscal year. But yeah. because it was such a it was such short notice, we were basically scrambling. The so last what was the, what was the final number that we were under budget or for retained earnings? Uh, One thirty. To be exact, by my numbers, but again, I haven't matched them to the towns, 138,224.61. Under budget. Yeah. Okay. We can go over budget. So that's on top of what we were already planning to add to retained earnings. Correct. Okay. So let's, I think that's positive overall, but there's likely some things that we could have done that we didn't. Right, well, right. I would have ordered, um, well, first of all, I would have ordered more meters at the end, but because we didn't know how much they were gonna get done with Smith Place, um, you know, we were, you know, I was just kind of being very cautious. Okay, did you have something like? 
Well, I was just going to say that with the money we have in retained earnings from this and what's coming from the indirect costs, uh, we could approach town meeting in the fall about transferring that money into the system maintenance money to cover Smith right. Place. Yeah. Good point, Lee. Okay. That'll be enough money to cover that um, Smith Place almost. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. So we need to really get on uh, the accountant department to really get squared away ASAP. Yeah, and I think we should be requesting a uh, update on where we are on all the outstanding uh, loan issues so that we know what is coming up when because we haven't gotten an update to that in probably three or four years. What well, was that update historically? Was that a report or a discussion? It was or a report. What? No, it was a whole Excel report showing every single uh, bond we had out for every single project and when it was going to be finished. And okay. it showed you know, the principal interest and admin fees. Okay. So you know, it was a lengthy. Uh, a lengthy, lengthy uh, Excel spreadsheet because they took out tiny bonds for all kinds of stuff, you know, but even so we have something like the 1.25 million for Elms Meadow that showed that it wasn't going to be finished until 2032. Okay. And everything else. All right. Uh, anything else on financials? No. Okay. So Beachwood Street project update. Uh, Brendan's still there, right? Yes, he is. Okay. So, um, Brendan, you can, if you could, give us an update on what you know. And then I think there's some financial discussion we need to have um, as a recap to my discussion with Brenda a week or so ago. Uh, so tonight, they are trying to fix the hydrant ladder. There's a leak. So once that is repaired, hopefully tonight, they should be done. And then the, the paving, they got a little patchwork to do, I guess. Uh, um, I haven't seen Brian's list, punch list. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the hydrants were addressed. Brian thought that um, they were left high for the fire department requested them. I don't know if that was true or not. So the shutdown yeah. will be at 11 p.m. tonight. Water will be restored by 5 a.m. It's from like 300 and 303 Beachwood all the way down to the Situate line. So there'll be a fire truck on site and police detail. So it starts tonight. It did not happen last night. It starts tonight. No, tonight's the shutdown. Okay. Um, the code red call went out last night. Okay. And we have it allocated potentially for two nights though, correct? No. No? Just tonight. Just tonight. Okay. So okay. they need to find the leak, fix the leak, get it patched up tonight. Yeah. Yesterday, Kevin put um, his gauge on the hydrant. Yeah, he, he's got a really good gauge and it did drop. So he did admit, yes, there's got to be a leak there. Okay. What our leak detection guy found. All right. So hopefully excavate it, shut it down, fix it, flush it, turn it back on. But Brian was very specific that that water had to be back on by 5 a.m. Yep. Okay. Keep us posted if we have any backlash there and issues, please. Um, so it was my understanding that Brian and you, Brendan, were going to do a walkthrough of the whole street with Kevin to develop the punch list. And then that kind of got sidetracked because of the hydrant leak. Exactly. Okay, so that's that's still sort of where we're at. We haven't moved on to any closeout or punch list because we're still trying to chase this leak. Correct. And then um, 
the last okay. case that Kevin submitted to us, he was trying to get his retainage back. So Brian, the leak was found. That day. You know, the leak was found that day as Brian and I were going over his last invoice, and he's like, "This is why you hold retainage." So we short paid that invoice anyways. We shouldn't be charged for any of this for tonight. I was just going to ask that question. No, I mean, no, this is not charge? on. This is on their dime. This is their screw up. Okay. How much is the fire truck per hour? I, is it? I think it's like between eleven hundred and sixteen hundred for the night, overnight kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's good. We, we should not be. Yeah, I'm happy you said that because I was just going to ask. We shouldn't be paying for that. No, no, and I'm not paying for any police detail either. Amen. That should definitely be KJS. Because this should, I mean, obviously it's brand new construction. We shouldn't be digging up a road that's been patched um, to find a leak. I'm right. just thankful that um, our leak detection guy was in town. Yeah. And he found it. Can we, ch can we charge a certain time for our leak detection guy onto the KGS invoice? He was just doing his normal stuff. Oh, okay. He was doing his normal survey of the town. Yeah. So he just we said thought, he was waiting for Beachwood construction to be over so that he could get on and start listening. And that's when he found it. Well, tell him we said thank you. We did. <laughs> <laughs> what about that lady's will while we're on that topic of invoices? Um, well, I think that's I think that's gonna be part of the closeout packet, but the biggest thing on my mind, which is why I made a point about saying the closeout hasn't happened and the punch list hasn't happened, because Kevin, according to one of his emails, I mean he is from from everyone's sort of interpretation of his email, he is still going to be presenting some change orders to us, even though the project is over and he hasn't brought anything forward to this point. So you know, we're potentially looking at guessing another hundred thousand dollars in change orders should we choose to accept them um, on top of a, a project that's already against the budget. So in my mind, that's the biggest piece of this closeout is what he anticipates or what he plans to present to us for change orders. So why would they wait? Why would they wait till the last minute for the change orders? Why wouldn't they just do the change orders as they go? request well, exactly yeah uh, that's that's the big disconnect here yeah that's normally how it's done if there's going to be a change order you get something in writing has to be signed off and that has that did not happen so maybe if if you do we do get some maybe our next in-person meeting we can go through them together i think we probably want to look at that closely. yeah and, it, and there was a meeting you know tentatively going to be scheduled with kevin and then the, the hydrant leak came up. So all of that is sort of a postponed. So I think we get through the hydrant leak issue, get some resolution there, and then we can proceed with the closed out process um, and have the discussion about what he thinks he's gonna charge us for an extra. Hmm. All right, well, at least we all agree on that portion. Um, project or installation wise, Brendan, is there anything else to highlight? No. Do the walkthrough. Okay, so to update Steve and Lee on my recent conversation with Brenda and Brenda fill in if I'm getting the details incorrect, but um, we owe KJS approximately 45,000 in retainage. Um, we have some invoices that have come in and uh, if my memory serves Brenda, we had approximately 25,000 remaining on our ARPA funding um and something like eighty thousand in outstanding invoices yeah so right now the only funding we have left is out of the covid money and that's twenty five thousand five twenty five ninety three and i just got a flagging bill for ten thousand which will close that out for Jesus. them um but we can't use the ARPA funding for flaggers well she said that but i don't know and and we still got the last kjs invoice whatever that's going to be 
So the flaggers, ten thousand. That's the final invoice. We have ten thousand twenty dollars, and then forty-five thousand for retainage plus any potential extras that KJS is trying to submit. So, right. um, it's anyone's guess right now what Kevin is planning to present for change orders. Um, but if I had to guess, it's not going to be twenty thousand dollars. So essentially. Brenda, you know, we have what we had discussed previously is we have approximately, you know, an $80,000 uh, outstanding balance of costs. Yeah. Which at this point, our option is to take it out of our operating budget um, or, you That's know, work. Right work through the disconnect on whether or not we can use the 2.6 million in funding um, or go to town meeting in November to allocate more money for this project. Exactly. <clears throat> so is there any discussion on that? Uh, I think Beach was listed in that uh, list of streets were the 2.6 million. I thought it was too, because it was supposed to go to the situate line. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, that flies in the face of what Jennifer has told us in terms of not being able to use it because it's not listed. But I would agree with you. I, I also thought it was. Chris, I think the best best thing we can do is just to really just get clarification from council on. The I don't know. Do you remember uh, what town meeting it was? Was it uh, 20? 21? I think it was 21. Did it go far, that far back? I know it wasn't last year. The oh, annual? God. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, yes, it was the annual. It was. I think it was with the rate study one. 21? I think it was 21. Because there was a huge list of streets with it. Yeah, right. Because we we did the rate study at the spring town meeting. No, it was, the, it was uh, 2022 annual town meeting. So really? replace water main Beachwood to town line 700,000. So that's a project we're currently engaged in. Uh, water main replacement on Beachwood Street, South Main, Doan Street, Church Street, Atlantic, 2.6 million. So yeah, we're covered. I, I don't know what the disconnect is there. Okay, so <clears throat> Brendan and I will get in touch with Jennifer. We'll have to have a sit down to confirm um, the money's available. We can use it for this project. It's listed in the warrant and there should be no issue. Right? Hopefully, Not yes. in my mind. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't see what the disconnect is, but we'll, we'll get that resolved. Brenda, anything else on that? Nope, that's all I got. All right, anything else on Beachwood? Mm -hmm. So um, just circling back on Steve's point about the resident with the tire damage. <clears throat> so we originally were thinking this was going to be seven or eight hundred dollars, and we all agreed that KJS should pick up the bill for that. Um, we then got the actual invoice, and it was something like twenty seven hundred. It, it was an estimate invoice. I don't think it was an actual. No, yeah, it was just an estimate to fix it. I told her to have. I said if she's going to have it fixed, we need an actual invoice. Um, and then I noticed that it was, it was a quote. Okay. Yeah, $2,333 and 38 cents. So did she get it? Was it one rim or two or? She was talking two rims plus all the work to. Uh, yeah, two. Okay, so if it does come in at 2300 versus the original 700 we thought, are we still in agreement that it's a KJS cost? Okay, uh, I would. Yeah. Lee, Lee, any discussion on that? No. Okay, all right, I would agree with that. Okay. Um, Coassi Golf Club. So a lot of stuff going back and forth um, on that. And 
perhaps Brendan, you can give us an update from your perspective on just operationally and installation wise, if there's anything to highlight, but the bigger thing that we need to discuss is the golf club's request for us for a, basically a financial commitment. Uh, what skin in the game are we going to have to extend this eight inch line to the property line uh, so we can then connect it uh, with a loop to our system. So uh, Brendan, anything on the past few meetings you've had there that we need to discuss? An eight inch, and I think they wanted us to pick up the tab of the pipe. Yeah, yeah that. You yeah. That? Okay. All right, but but nothing operationally or installation wise that we need to discuss other than the, who's paying for what. Yeah, they've requested um, scheduled it for next Wednesday, um, August second. Right. And I never heard back from that plumber either in regards to putting the meter inside the new building. He never got back to me. Okay, so in terms of the communication loop here, what's happening is I'm communicating with Glenn at the golf course. Brian and Brendan are also communicating with Glenn because he's the point of contact for the golf course. But as it relates to this water main work, he has to go to his GC. Then his GC has to go to his utility contractor. So there's some stuff that is not that clear in this loop of communication, but uh, I'll kind of lay out what I understand at this point and then what I understand the ask to be. Um, and what we discuss and hopefully determine today. So I sent you the spreadsheet that Glenn sent me yesterday. Um, so the additional, so sequentially, they were going to bring, I think a two inch and a six inch to the new maintenance building. And going back a couple of months now, they came to us, um, basically knowing that they had a large system development fee of roughly $86,000. Um, they presented to us, the golf course presented to us that it may make sense to do something different so we can create a loop in our distribution system. Everyone agreed that we liked that idea, let's explore it more. So over the weeks and months we've explored it more, costs have been generated, we've marked it out. Everyone has agreed as to where um, the line would go right behind the DPW garage where it would end. Um, Brendan's been up there, Brian's been up there, I've been up there. Um, so the golf course was initially under the impression that they would just increase the size of the line from a six inch to an eight inch and they would only bring it to their building. And we would then extend it to the property line to make the loop. Um, in our last meeting, we said, no, we'd really like you to do the work on your property, bring the eight inch line to the property line. So they've re-engineered that, they've staked it out at the property line, um, and, and that's where we're at. So now the golf course has come back with some firm numbers and what their increased cost would be to accommodate that request. So the additional cost increase from a six to an eight, which was the original discussion, it's an additional $9,000. Now what they're saying is the cost to bring the eight inch pipe to the property line is 54,000. So that's labor and materials, right? Um, there was some discussion about the water department paying for the pipe um, directly or buying the pipe and, and providing it. Um, so that's something that is up for discussion, um, but certainly the golf club is looking for something from us in terms of what we're going to do to help offset the additional cost um, for what is sort of agreed or perceived to be a benefit to us, the town, the department, and our distribution system. So I think we all agree that this would be a benefit to the town, to the department, and the distribution system if we can or when we can loop the system. Just for some context, a very rough estimate, if we have a line, we have an eight inch line 
at the property line behind the DPW garage to then extend it to our existing main on Cedar Street. Brian and I roughly estimate that will probably be an additional $300,000. Um, so just so we know what the future may hold if we connect this loop, it's you know three to $400,000 project to make this happen. So not only are we considering what we're gonna pitch in for the golf club portion, but we know in the future we have a three to four hundred thousand dollar project to connect that loop. So when I when I spoke to Glenn this morning to try to find out what part of the fifty four thousand is is material, he didn't really have that answer, and that's why I was saying it's it's a communication loop between him his GC and the utility contractor is not that smooth. Um, he gave me some numbers like it's $90 a foot and $46 a foot is the material. So, and then he said it's 1,035 feet, but that math doesn't add up. That would be $93,000 and it's, the math doesn't add up. So uh, before we kind of get into those particulars, I'll just stop it there and see what thoughts or discussion we have based on what we know at this point. So my big thing is, I agree with the loop. I agree with everything, but the big question is when can we do the spend the three four hundred thousand dollars? Because there's other mains that have to be replaced. You know, so is it going to sit there for 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years? I don't know. Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. I think that would that that would certainly be on us to determine how big of a priority it is. Uh, I know the loop has been discussed for at least the last six to eight years because we did the loop on the other end of town and uh, Carl thought it was a priority after we did that. Now, I'm just a little confused here. The $86,000 development fee, are they going to be paying that? So, Or do they want to waive that? Yes, yeah, so, so our, the original context or framework of the discussion was that if they aid us in making this loop, we would waive the development fee. So what I'm stuck on is we're losing out on 86,000. We, they're asking us to chip in on the project. Uh, and then down the road, we still have 400,000 to do this. So um, that, that's, that's where my opinion is. is, is Brenda, is Brendan still there? Yes. Uh, what? Uh, let's ask. I'd uh, rather ask, let's ask Brendan. Brendan, how critical is the is the loop in your opinion? Well, let's do the math on. If you go from Cedar Street golf course to the DPW without using the golf course, that's about nine hundred feet, and you're hammering wedge. To put that in the equation, you're paying for that if it ever gets looped. The other way, you're going through town property. So you're not paying for details to the whole job, pretty much. Save in there. Is it critical? We have other things that are more important, but be nice to get. That's all. You know, it's nice to have that. Just okay. the cost. You can see the way the difference. You're getting an 86, was it, or 84 right now? Yeah. Yeah. All right, but I'm still a little confused here what you said in the beginning that they had an additional $9,000 plus 54,000. Is that the cost for them to bring it to the DPW building? Yes. 63,000? Correct. So and they're not, looking for us to put in money on that? That is essentially what they're asking is, and I quote, what is the, what are we willing to do for a financial commitment to this project? But I mean, after we take <laughs> off the 86,000 that we're not going to charge them, we're going to give them more money? That's right. That, that is what is in front of us for discussion. Doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So we'd be giving up the eighty-six thousand dollars fee, and we'd be paying for it. Yeah. So yeah. my 
so my opinion is I, I wouldn't <clears throat> want to give up. I, I wouldn't want it. It's either one or the other. You know, so, you know, we don't want to give up a, a big fee and have to pay more money. You know, it really makes no financial sense. We're actually losing. Well, I mean, I mean for us to give up 86000 and then pay 63000 additional, that doesn't make financial sense at all. You guys mind if I chime in real quick? Go sure. ahead. Yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, treatability again. I know it's is very important. This loop might provide some, um, some re redundancy, but when you look at this filter plant, I think every dime should really be considered on where we can invest it here to improve water quality or treatment, treatability. So something to think about. Um, I'm all for dist distribution improvements and uh, improving reliability redundancy but you know i know money's tight so just consider that in your decision making if you want to take a deeper dive i'd be happy to do that with jonathan or maybe some of our engineers as well but i just wanted to kind of get that on your radar what are you saying i don't understand is the point that the loop is going to help water quality and we should but i'm consider. saying no i'm saying that you have more issues here at this treatment plant and trying to upgrade the plant then maybe spending all that additional funds on that loop <clears throat> so, yeah it would provide you some redundancy but in the big picture if you're following a drop of water you look at you know your source and your ability to treat long term you have a lot of major process issues here coming up on a very old plant a lot of things are becoming antiquated and such um you know your reliability your ability to treat this source you know so there's more important things on the table, I think. So unfortunately, um, I didn't know how far down the road this was, or I would have said this a month or so ago, but all I'm saying is consider where you're spending your money. Is it a wish list thing, or is it something that absolutely has to happen regarding water quality in a distribution system? Or is it just you know creating some redundancy and reliability that's obviously we want, but when you're weighing in on what's more important as far as treatability, uh, versus this project, um, you know, just consider where you're putting the money. That's all, I guess, is what I'm saying. Okay, I, I have one other question too. Isn't there some other location for this loop rather than this particular location? Because I thought when Carl was talking about the loop, it was uh, going in another direction. Yeah, so on Cedar Street itself, but from Cedar Street to the DPW, mm -hmm. that property, you go up the main road, there's ledge there, that's the issue. That's all, I just wanted to chime in if you yeah. guys. Could. No, Fred, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it really starts at the source. Right. And Mike, whatever's, whatever's happened in Hingham right. is coming from our side. Maybe. Like, for example, the proposal that's on the table now to do the site civil, the borings and the engineering to get out in front of the residual management issue. Uh, so we kind of we wanted that proposal in front of us to say, can we take some preemptive steps to get ready? So when the facility study is complete, you know, and they make those recommendations, we can get after those issues out here because that's been a real struggle consistently over the years. You know, this loop is nice, but if you if money is really tight, uh, you really maybe say, eh, well, we don't need it. Or, you know, I don't know what kind of pressure you're receiving or um, what kind of dialogues behind. It, but I didn't know that there was going to be some additional cost for you guys that was put out there, or I would have said this a while ago. So something to consider. Uh, I'd be happy to talk about this you know, whatever, in the meeting or off the record, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, we could certainly, Chris, if you want to do one-on-one, -on -one, you guys, whatever you want to do, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm kind of waiting on this, this facility study as well. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think there is some degree of agreement that we don't want to lose the opportunity to do this, even if it's down the road, 
we have the preparation in place, we have the infrastructure in place, it's a very good opportunity to improve the system, um, whether it happens next year or five years, uh, the pipe's still gonna be there at the property line. Um, <clears throat> so is there anything else besides the one idea that's come up to pay for the pipe? Is there anything else that can be considered um, for the one for the uh, golf club, you know, for example, waiving their quarterly fee for a period of time. You know, um, is there anything that because basically the way the way I look at it is one we can say we're not going to uh, contribute anything to the additional cost, but we'll still waive your fee. If you do this for us, if you do this for the water department and put this pipe in. Um, or two, we could say we're still going to charge you the fee and they say, okay, we're just going to put in our six inch pipe and we have no opportunity to ever create this loop in the same manner. So if we can go with the former, um, that would be better. So the latter where we say we're gonna charge you the fee and they say, okay, we're gonna abandon the plan to upgrade to the eight and put it at the property line. Then we lose that opportunity. So I think this is a good opportunity to come up with a compromise to do something. Um, paying $64,000 to do it is obviously, I think a non-starter. So is there any other idea as to what we can potentially chip in or do for the club to make this more enticing for them? What about having it end at the back of the building rather than go all the way to the property line? Because it seemed like, you know, there was a little bit less money being put on the table when, when that was the case. Yeah, it goes from 60,000 down to nine. Um, but then we go back to what we considered before. Of if we do ever try to do this loop, then we have to then do work on their property, on private property. Yeah, the mobility. So, you know, would have nice. to remobilize, obviously, and that there's a cost associated with that too. Right. So but, I would look. I would look at option A would be have them bring it to the property line at their cost, waive the fee. Second, it would be just pay the fee and the pipe by the building. Yeah, I mean, if they're just going to end the pipe at the building, I, I don't. It, it, I don't see the point of any of it. Well, uh, it's just um, you mean more pipe up into the property? Is that what you mean? Yeah, to end at the yeah towards the end of the property line. It's just you know some cost avoidance down the road and get gets us ready, so you don't have to dig up through that area again. I guess. Was it what's the distance between the new the new maintenance building to the property line? It's like hundred feet. That's it. Maybe maybe two hundred. No, I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah, probably a hundred. No, it's 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 more than hundred feet. Brendan, what do you think it is? Yeah, well, Brian was worried about once that job is done, you won't be able to get on that property. Tom, Tom, so I guess. Well, exactly. That's what I, that's my point. Is if we're going to do this, we've got to bring the pipe to the property line. Right, right to the swale there, or past it. Right. That's what they were discussing. So Brenda confirmed that they have two, currently they have two meters and they only pay the 187 quarterly fee or 185, whatever it is. So if we waive their quarterly fee for a period of time, it doesn't amount to much over a long period of time. So to me, I'm not sure that's even an option, but. Um, that would be another coding nightmare for me for the billing system too. I'd have to create yet another rate table. See, I don't understand why we want, if we are waiving the 86,000 and the work is costing less than 86,000 to do, why would we give them more consideration? Yeah, I would, I would just, if they want to waive the fee, they bring it to the property line. Okay. I mean, that, that's certainly one option. I think 
I, I think just in the spirit of sort of partnership, you know, the, the discussion is what can we do to, you know, maybe, maybe that's it. Um, maybe, maybe we waive the fee. Which again, yeah, to, to Lee's point, it does appear to be a, a financial win anyway for them. I mean, it, it's giving them more than twenty thousand. Oh yeah, according to their figures, that's that's quite a. We've lived to this point without that loop. We'll survive. Yeah, just so yeah, don't worry about it too much. But I understand your position very well. Just maybe think about it a little different. That's all. I think it's good if they bring it to the property line. Wave the wave the fee, and we just don't spend any extra additional funds. Yeah. I think we have more. We have more stuff coming on the horizon. We are going to take a whack at the budget. We're not even. A, we're not even a solid month into the new fiscal year. You know, but as long as we get a clear connection that we can start the loop on, right? That's all we want, and we are giving them a huge consideration. So oh. I don't know what else they would need. How's it digging up there? Does anybody know? Is it ledgy? Is it? They, they've hammered it all out. The yeah. only thing I think they were looking for is if we purchase the pipe, he just mentioned this yesterday, Brian, we're not paying taxes on it. They would. That's because, true, yeah. You know, so that's why they were doing going that angle, I would say. Well, yeah. if we purchase the pipe, then... Uh, their fee would be the cost of the pipe. Yeah, pretty much as I even yeah. You know, and then that would save them the taxes and they'd be making money that way. Right. So I think if I we were, mind. if if we were consider purchasing a portion of the pipe, I, I personally think it should be the additional length from the building to the property line. But again, why well, made a big point about us to Glenn, to the GC, to the utility contractors, because I have not been able to get that breakdown and I've requested it three times. Um, I want to see what the material cost is for the pipe from the building to the property line, because that <clears throat> is solely a benefit to the town and the d distribution system. Um, so if we were to consider paying for some pipe, I think it should be that section. Or, you know, I don't mind even paying for the entire section of the pipe, and then they pay us back as a development fee because they'd be saving how much in taxes? Two, four thousand dollars. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? We, we wouldn't be losing any money. They'd be paying less for the job. So you're saying. So that's a benefit to them. So you say we buy the pipe, take it off the development fee? We buy the pipe and then charge in the development fee for whatever the pipe costs. Yeah. So they, you know, they don't show it on their books that they bought the pipe. And uh, we're charging them a development fee. I feel like I'm confused. Why are you confused? What, what, I don't what know. Part don't what you do you think the cost of the pipe's going to be? What what you, what's an approximation? Any idea? I have no clue. Well, that's why I was making a point about not having that accurate of information because what Glenn told me is that it's forty six dollars and fifty cents per foot for eight inch pipe. Forty six fifty. How many feet? Just just the material. <clears throat> what's that? Name? At and, 200, and are we looking at 100 feet? Call 200 feet. Ten, let's call 10,000 bucks. Yeah. $50. 200 feet, 10,000 bucks. So you take the $10,000, subtract it off the 87,000? 63. Yeah. Six, 000, yeah. And so they would be paying fifty three thousand. I'm sorry, I got might be having one of those moments. Yeah, I think it, I think it requires some more detail on the actual costs. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I, I I do think Lee's idea is a good one. 
Um, it could it, it, it could create some cost efficiencies for everybody. Um, but uh, they have, what I'm told, they have a bill of materials order already teed up at Windwater, maybe. Brenda, do you know the supplier they were using? Uh, they, um, Brian had asked me if we had an account with Windwater, which we do not. I know that, that that's who they were looking at for pipe. I mean, it's not a big deal to get a vendor set up in the, the AP system for the town. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of pipe were we looking at for there? Do we know? Well, ductile, isn't that still too hard to get? They have it, I guess. Oh, well, if they've got it secured, then they should have a dollar amount for what they paid. Um, okay, so I can go back to Glenn and try to get that exact information. Um, so it looks like we, we're not going to be able to make a motion or a decision on this right now. We don't have enough information. Um, yeah, we need any, real numbers. All right. Is there any other discussion? I mean, I, I think we all agree that the water department should not pay the full cost for labor material to bring the eight inch from the main to the property line. Correct. Correct. Not if you're waiving 86,000 in, in system development fees. Okay. All right, any further discussion on that? Nope. Okay. Um, moving on, we talked about 147 Main Street. Uh, one Pleasant Street development. So, Lee, you wanted to add this to the agenda? Anything specific you want to discuss? Well, I mean, uh, they have to come before us and we have to get the development fees, basically, in order. Right. So, last time we spoke, we, we agreed that it would be um, a unit fee for the 14 units they're adding at 2720 and there would be no development fee because it's a net reduction in line size. So um, I'm not sure if they need to come before us. I think what we need to do is send them a letter. All right, they have to put in an application, right, Brenda? Yeah, I don't, I don't have an application or anything. What's the application? Well, it's usually just a renewal um, because it's already an existing account. So it's not like there's a big formality with it. Um, I mean, they already have a fire line. They already have the domestic line. Um, I think we would have to come up with some sort of a letter to the developer or the owner <coughs> stating, you know, whatever, whatever, however you want to word it that will be, you know, in order to get water or whatever, you, you're you gonna be charged this, what is it, 2720 times 14, 38,000. Can you draft the letter, Brenda, or do you, do you not know what we're trying to say? Um, I'll try to draft a letter. Yeah, it has to be because of change of use. And according to our rules and regulations, you are now putting in residential units and are, according to our rules and regulations, development fee is per unit. What I'll do is I will draft something down and dirty and send it to you, Lee. Okay. And then um, we can all look at it. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah we can send it to the group. We'll all take a look yep. at it. Thank you. All right, anything else on that, Lee? No, I mean, I, I just wanna get this moving along so we can get some money in, that's all, and get them going so they can get their occupancy permit. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and, you know, as long as we don't need any other fees with lines or anything else, do we need any other fees because they are increasing uh, the commercial space? I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Um, 
because I thought they were putting in my five and a half bathrooms down there. I don't know what they had before. I don't know if that include, if that indicates anything. Those are just bathrooms. It's not like it's a full unit. Yeah. So I think we could just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, Hingham Interconnect. Is that just a general update status? Yeah, well, we were just talking about that too with the bacteria, you know, and what's happening. And then we have to make sure someone is working on the contract coming up with uh, Linden Ponds. Right. And to make sure that, you know, we're still be able to uh, put water into Hingham. I thought this whole matter was resolved. But this is something that should be discussed next month to see what is happening. Because we Nicole. did spend quite a bit of money to get this fixed with the new systems put in. Well, Jonathan's here right now. So if you have questions about us shutting down, he's here to answer it. Jonathan's on the spot. Okay, Jonathan, when are we go opening up again? Stuff from what's his name? Darren. Yeah, um, here's my understanding, and here's everything that I know. They had a bacteria hit, I don't know when, a week or two ago. They asked us to raise the residual, which we did a few days later. They told me to shut it off, didn't really say why, just that they were being more safe than sorry. And then yesterday, they started asking us about borrowing pumps to add chlorine at, a, I think, at a hydrant in Hull, and which we provided. They had some issues getting it running. It wasn't big enough. And then today we give them, we gave them a bigger pump. And that's the beginning and the end of it. That's all I know. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? So I don't think it's anything on our side. I hope not. I mean, if, if we pumped it up, I mean, we, we can see how much we're pumping over there. So I think it's all on them. Afraid get rid of the, the uh, get those rewards um, taken away from the state house. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure yeah. you're trembling. And I can always find out from um, John and Monty and Linden Ponds when the group is ready. And grab Russell. Well, that's it. We haven't had uh, an interconnect meeting in months. We used to go over to Linda Ponds all the time and meet with John Amonte. It's been over a year now. Yeah. I'll reach out to him prior to the next next meeting. All right. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Okay, so yeah, we do need to keep that on the radar here because time is obviously ticking away. So um, I will take a look at that agreement as well, but we'll eventually need to engage town council. Um, abatements, I believe we have won. So Chris, I have to abstain from this abatement. Okay. I can't vote on this. All righty. 107 Ripley Road, Cohasset. Um, apparently a pipe burst during deep freeze the first winter in February, the crawl space undetected until toilet issues occurred in April. Um, was yeah, able to fix the problem? Just Sorry, to ahead, let Brenda. you know, um, so this is Ava <clears throat> Kachina, that building itself, you know, the old log in line. Um, it, it, it's deplorable in the underneath. Um, so the owners, had, unbeknownst to them, they had no idea that that pipe was letting go. They still had water, but until I re we reached out to them about the high bill, they had no idea that it, it had let go. So this is like um, real old school. Yeah, Brendan line. and Connor don't even want yeah, to go in there. One line <laughs> between two buildings. So yeah. Kind of a mess. There was a rat one time yeah. scene. I mean, it, it's, it's 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 just not good. It's just not good. I always apologize if I got to send them over there to that building for any reason. 
right, so they're asking their previous quarterly average is 425 and this bill was 1600. So they're. So how much are they asking for Brenda? Um, they asked for 5,500 cubic feet to be abated. So actually their, their water bill was $644. And normally, just just water. I'm talking, um, you know, it's it's less than a hundred dollars per restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I went back years too on this one. I mean, hmm. I'm. I mean, have you eaten in there? Have seen how tiny it is? Not not recently. Oh, it's it's tiny. <clears throat> oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank oh, you for bringing um, up the log and line, though. It's fond memories of breakfast yeah, and watching yeah. the train go around. Yeah, exactly. Um, Lee, any discussion? Well, um, you know, we've been giving out an awful lot of abatements. And the problem with a lot of these is there is no personal responsibility on any of our customers. It's just like, oh, here it is. I need it. Give it to me. And I, that's difficult <laughs> for me to accept. I don't mind giving them 50%, but the whole thing. I think she would be ecstatic with 50%. You know, because wasn't that a previous amount we used to give? Yes. So, yep. 50% of the 644? So cut that well, to no, 644 was the whole bill, right? No, 644 was just the water. That didn't include the cap, uh, the flat. No, 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 the water. I mean, that was the entire water bill. What would it Correct. normally have been? 80. Probably 80. 80. Okay. But she's, I mean, so, she paid the bill right away, but because she, she didn't, you know, want to not want to pay it. But um, she came in the other day when she dropped it off the request and she said anything would be helpful um i think sewer did half I yeah because i mean that's like, what sewer basically does is half we've been giving all but wouldn't it be more like 280 we'd be giving her because wouldn't uh if it was 640 you take 80 off 644 divided by two 322 but wait uh she wanted she didn't want the entire amount off right she wanted to go back. She only wanted a portion, I thought. Right. Yeah. She's asking yeah. for an, an abatement to equal the amount of her pre, okay. of a historical bill. So she's asking all for right. an abatement so of, of all of the excess. If you took the 640 off of her previous bill, that's what it would be. I thought it would, 640 was her entire bill for the water for the month. Or for, for the, the quarter. quarter, it was 644, yes. 644 and she was asking it to come down to what the other bill was so the other no, bill she was just asking um well yeah. well whatever yeah, 1500 yes yeah, she was asking it to go back to 1500 but you so how much would 1500 be that would bring it down to our normal usage of 8055 8055 okay but you just so, said 50 and, I said and you know, I said, give her 50. Per she is asking for the difference between 80 and 640, I presumed. 560. Correct. She wasn't asking for the whole 640 back. <clears throat> and I'm saying, yeah. give her 50% of the 560. And, she, and I'm telling you, she would be thrilled with that. Okay. Okay. So. Um... <clears throat> All right. Are you clear with this, Chris? Uh, yes. So, <clears throat> um, excuse me, let me clear my throat here. Excuse me. So, the, uh, Lee, would you like to make a motion on that to abate $280 off this invoice? Uh, yes, whatever. Uh, to, was it 107? 107. 107. Yeah. Yep. All right. I make a motion to obey $200, $280 off the water bill of 107 Ripley Road, which Second. would be 50% of the excess water that she was charged. Second. 
All in favor? Are you saying now 80? Uh, wait, uh, not 322? What? How much hmm? do you want to do 180? We want to do 280. 280. Yeah. So it's 50% of the request of abatement. Yeah. So she um, was asking for abatement of 5,500 cubic feet, which would have been 560, more or less, or whatever. Yes. Um, All right, Brenda, figure out the right amount. I'm just I doing, I'm doing in front of $280 because that's what you voted on. Because we yep. can amend the vote right now. I would say it's 322, which is 50%. But that's 50% of the entire bill. Correct. Right. You're right. And we're we're talking about 50% yeah, of the request of abatement. Yeah, she was asking right. for abatement on 5,500 right. cubic feet, not the entire bill. We're abating $280. Was this seconded? Yes. Seconded, yep. We're all set. All right. You got on that, Brenda? I got it. Okay, thank you. Um, I know we have meeting minutes that were sent around, but I know I have not reviewed them. Is there anything to discuss or do you want to put those up for a motion, Lee? I don't know. I reviewed them. You got them, right, Brenda? Yeah, there was only one small change in it, so. Yep. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, all right, let's make a motion then. Uh, I make a motion to approve the meeting minute notes of june 23rd 2023 i'll second all in favor aye aye got okay. it um that concludes the agenda is there any commission comments no nope. nope okay so we have some follow up with Jennifer on the uh, approved funding for water main work, which I'll work with Brenda on. Uh, we have some follow up on the golf club, uh, which the board will have to act on at some point when we get additional information. Um, I'll send around an email after my meeting with Woodard tomorrow if there's anything substantial on the uh study project um okay we also have follow-up on what our uh outstanding loans are to yes. get us a current up-to-date yes I projection will, uh, of when everything is going to be paid off because we basically don't have anything from the last 12 years it's all old stuff okay all right, um, just one more thing before I forget. Since you did approve the abatement, I'm gonna need signatures or signature one um, on the form that I bring up to town hall. I'm around right. tomorrow. Day right. or tomorrow? Not today, not, not today. <laughs> if <laughs> I could do it on the way home the to the gym work. tomorrow, I'll do it. Um, I, I got to put the paperwork together, so I won't be ready till sometime tomorrow. Lee, if you want to do it, that'd be great. You know, I could do it after after 10 o'clock tomorrow. I'll text you, Lee. Is that right? I'll text okay. you. Because what's tomorrow? Payday. Oh, yeah, because I have an 1130 appointment tomorrow <laughs> in the hangout. Anything else, Brenda? No, I'm so I can do it before on my way to the appointment at 11 o'clock or to after 10 on my way home from the gym. I'll text you when it's done, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn the Board of Water Commission meeting of July 26, 2023 at 1 43 p.m. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. Okay. One last thing. If anybody's not doing anything three o'clock Sunday afternoon, there's a wonderful Rusty Skipper concert at the Head Shell at the Conservatory. Chris and I will be there with the family. That's right. I hope so. <laughs> Thank right. you. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.